Welcome to Paul or Nothing, the place to get all of your Paul all of the time. Join me, your host, Sam Wiles, as we discover the history, the music, and the man behind it all, Paul McCartney. To get in contact with the show, email us at paulmccartneypod at gmail.com. Something I really admire about your Instagram as well is the uh, use of magazines and other kind of monthly prints. Like that is something that really caught my eye. And I've never really asked anyone on, on the podcast this before. What are, what is some of your favorite Beatle magazine content? Do you have any particular favorite publications or writers, anything like that? Interesting about magazines is going back to what we said before. Magazines, when I was, when I was about 10 or 11, when I first started to get into the Beatles, magazines were the main way of getting news about mm. anything about the Beatles obviously and and solo um pre-internet so my copy of Mojo Q Select which you put you might be too young to remember Select Select no Select Select was a mainly Britpop based 90s magazine famously came once in the days when you would just get anything free with, with a magazine it came it came like a box and it had a a, a, a small can of Sunkist do you have a Sunkist Sunk- No and we wore was, an onion on our belt, which was the style <laughs> at the time. Yeah. Sunkist was a was a, uh, a rival to Fanta in the fizzy <laughs> orange. Have a Google of Sunkist. It was, in my view, um, better than Fanta. Um, but anyway, that's it, this, the hot this, take of the episode, folks. That yeah, is the hot, yeah. yeah, and it also came with a single twirl. You know, a twirl would normally be a two fingers. Yeah, uh, it just came with a single twirl. So that came free with Select magazine. But anyway, um, yeah, have you. Um, Magazines were a massive source of news for me. Uh, and around the time with the anthology, which mm. was a big uh, landmark in a lot of people of my age's uh, introduction to, to, to the Beatles and the Beatles solo, um, Mojo did this really cool thing where they did three uh, different covers. Uh, of, of So you had a, a, a different e- three different eras. So pop, psychedelic and kind of white album. Mm. Um, so I've got a massive amount of uh, affection for that magazine, which I had. Another one uh, is the Q magazine from that time. I think my third or fourth most liked picture on my Instagram feed is the December 1995 issue of Q because it has the three Beatle, the, the three tools, um, as taken by Linda of the time. So I have a lot of affection for that. Another really great one is a Q, an, an issue with Q, which is which I would recommend to your good self if you aren't aware of it already, which is around Flaming Pie from 1997. In fact, do you remember I posted on Twitter, they did a, a really good interview with Paul by the journalist Andrew Collins, and they did like a pre, like a, a review of McCartney's solo albums. I posted it around Christmas and you commented saying, I'm so glad I was only five because I'd have been raging at this stuff. Oh, yeah. It, it kind of shut on everything bar Band on the Run and took yeah. yeah, Yeah, so that kind of received wisdom of Paul Solo stuff, which start, which that narrative starts to change in the last kind of, really since the archive collection started in the last kind of 10, 15 years. Um, it, I think even... I think even Ram, which now, 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 if you, if you have a go at Ram now, then you're, you know, you're, um, you're cancelled straight away. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, yes, yeah, so that 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 magazine's really, uh, I, I, I get genuine joy from picking it up and flicking through them because they were nice little. Think about magazines are this; they were nice little kind of time capsule. Uh, mm. So, and you get some good other content, obviously that aren't isn't Beatle related. Uh, but yeah. Much missed Q, um, which obviously folded uh, last year. I think was it your year before? I can't remember. I think it might have been. I think it was just post COVID uh, that that Q went. Um, so yeah, and of course, and another good thing about magazines is I'm a big fan of the old Sunday supplements, uh, and you get uh, which I don't know if they have another in in the states or elsewhere, um, but in the UK, uh, the poor paper boys trying to deliver uh sunday's you know sunday papers that thick, yeah it's, it's like a it's hugely thick thing with a, with different magazines and um a cooking one a stuff. home one a gardening one yeah or one for women is you, yeah. like, you used to get like you used to get with the daily mail you'd get female uh which of course suggested that the, <laughs> oh my, i don't oh my god <laughs> yeah, which of course suggested that the rest of the paper was just for men. Um, I think we're oh, thankfully, I think we're yeah. past those times now. Um, but yes, yeah, so Sunday Supplements, you get some really good Beatle uh, magazines. Um, normally it's a time with a promotional uh effort on mm. something, but uh, some really 
high quality magazines, uh, which again, ar- a- around the time of the anthology, there's a really good independent one, which had on the front cover had the th- had three kind of um, figures, like plastic toys of the three surviving Beatles, uh, which just the word come together on the front. See, I retain that image. That's what a powerful image that is 25 years ago. It's still in my head. I think I'm the target audience for Beatle magazines. It's like, if, if I've got a few quid in my pocket, a little bit of change, and I've already got my bus fare, you know, and I walk past a rack and there's a picture of John, Paul, George, or Ringo, it's an out-of-body experience. You just find yourself floating towards the cash register. And, and paying your £5.50. Yeah, literally, it's, it, it, I mean, the equivalent for the States would be like $7 for a bloody magazine, which is like... <laughs> Like that that's almost around the cost of like a cinema ticket now, just just getting a couple a couple of hundred words and some high quality photographs. But um my my, my friend Tom showed me uh from, from the latest mojo the other the other day. Uh, it's got Kate Bush on the front, I think. Yeah. And it was you know the classic photo of the quarry men at, um where it's like John, Paul and George, and they're all really young. And like John's very red face because he's probably drunk and they all look like Buddy Holly. There's another photo from another angle that I'd never seen before. And I'm like, do not lose this magazine. Do not ever, because half of this stuff you never find online because Getty Images has like got it under lock and lock and key or something. Yeah, that's um, interesting. So that's uh, that's a Mike McCartney picture. Yes. That, that new one, which was only discovered. I think he only found it this year because I think he's got Ooh. a book out. He's got a book coming out. Right. Um, I think that's George's brother's wedding. And they were the they were the they were the, the wedding band. Um, what what a wedding band! I mean, some of the, wedding, the weddings that I've been to certainly wasn't the Beatles, put it that way. But yeah, that you're, you're right. You, the magazines you do get those images and pictures that um, it's hard to find online. Even though you can get anything, uh, sometimes it's hard to, to to actually track it down because you've got to get the right search, you've got to get the right mm-hmm. combination of words to to bring it up. So. Yeah, I, I really hope that obviously there were a lot less magazines now than there were when I were a lad, but uh, hopefully things like Mojo and Uncut, um, which have, you know, and obviously Word magazine, the much missed Word magazine, uh, which obviously led to um, Word in Your Ear and the Word podcast. Uh, uh, Stack what he game. Sorry. Stack- <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed that they still do that. I'm amazed that they have that. Uh. that, that uh, I do tend to skip that bit of the beginning. I'm not a fan of the Stag No, because they, they actually read out uh, two of my Stag Waddies once. So oh, yes, I, yeah, I mean, you told me that. Yeah, yeah. that is, that is uh, you know, on my deathbed, I'll be like, Doc, come come closer. Come closer. <laughs> do you yeah. remember David Hepworth? <laughs> no, my favourite quote of theirs, um, I, I don't know which one of them said it was, you know, the Beatles, they didn't make albums, they made records. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what that, does that even mean? I don't even that's know. an excellent David Hepworth yeah. impression. If if yeah. there's a market for a David Hepworth um, kind of tribute act, uh, uh, um, then you're you're right in there, Sam. Uh, just I, I just need someone else to do the double act. Hint, hint. No, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, what about uh, what, what about more? Uh, well, sorry, less formal publications like fan magazines or like Club Sandwich. No, I'm not. I've got a since I've been doing the Instagram, people have a bit like you actually, people do send you things, which I think is very kind, uh, mm. and it, stuff that they don't have room for anymore. Um, so you know, like people that the Beatles book magazine, um, that I, I, I got a very, very nice man called Carl Magnus Palm, who is the Mark Lewison of ABBA. He's a very, oh, very, okay. Okay, he's a yeah. fa- very, very nice man, and he he often interacts with me. So, shout out to Carl if you're listening. Um, and he very kindly sent me a little, uh, about eight or nine Beatles little, little Beatles books um, mm. from the late eighties. There's a lot of stuff about mm. flowers and the dirt on there. Um, but no, I haven't, I haven't really gone in for the fanzine stuff. I think I might have got a few when I was younger. When you used to like write off in the back of in the back of magazines, you could write off for fanzines about stuff um i I, but i don't have many more um no i'm a firm i like a nice hard back rather than a a pamphlet essentially but but all those people that do all that great work well done them what about um like coffee table books or like just large big picture books is that is up your Um, alley yeah that's there's a few of those stacked up my alley um again cost dependent um mm. but there's some some wonderful there's a really good uh, harry benson book 
Uh, Harry Benson, who was a photographer that went on the first US trip with them, and he's still alive. Uh, he's, I think he's in his 90s now, and his daughter's run his Instagram uh, at Harry Benson CBE. And, is, it, is it Harry uh, G Benson? Might be. Yeah, I don't know. I think I've got him on Facebook. I, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He's, yeah. He's, he's 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 a good lad, Harry. But he's but yeah, he did a fantastic um, coffee table book. I mean, I love that that first US tour. I I love the photos. I love you know going back to what we were saying earlier that they just look like they're having the best time. The first US trip, not so much the summer tour, but that those ten days in you know New York, Washington, Miami Beach, they just look like they're just having the most fun, you know, and it, it must have been, you know, like you kind of look back on your life and you remember that golden summer when you were like, you know, 17, 18, where you had no responsibilities and you had a little bit of money in your pocket. Um, that That's the ultimate version of that, isn't it? They were just, they were literally kings of the world. So, you know, Harry Benson's book captures that really, really well. But yeah, I love a good, um, obviously the Beatles Anthology book itself is a, uh, a weighty tome of a coffee book uh, uh sorry a, a coffee table book so yeah that and that was never that was never pricey down was it that was never there was never a smaller version of the anthology book uh which upset some people but hey people do get upset about strange things uh what other ones are there yeah they, they, you know there's some really good some of the um paul saltzman who's just done this film about the Beatles in India, he's done mm. some really good books about, uh, obviously, about the time in Rishikesh. Some really fantastic pictures. Uh, so, yeah, I do love, I do love. And I got one only recently from like the late 90s, which is uh, just called, it's just, I think it's just called All You Need Is Love. And it's just pictures from the All You Need Is Love day. It's just mm. pictures of them rehearsing, hanging out. Um, one of the last great days, I think. One of the last days of, of the Beatles where... You know, it's a it's a lovely summer's afternoon. They're about to sing this song to the whole planet. They still love each other at that point. Brian is still there, um, and yeah, some fantastic photos in there. So yeah, I'm I'm all in on the photo books too. No, I recently acquired um, postcards from the lads. All right, and oh, it's just it's just love so it. charming, and you can't help but read it in Ringo's voice as well, like an episode <laughs> of Thomas the Tank Engine. This one, this one was from John when he was in the Bahamas. It's like, oh, oh yeah, I love the one where he see, he says to Ringo, he suggests Ringo should make music a bit like Blondie from like the <laughs> late seventies. Uh, I could try to picture Ringo doing Heart of Glass, spinning around a a, a, a disco, a dance floor. Although one he did do some way disco stuff. or another, yeah, yeah. Well, the, that that works quite well actually. Yeah, but, in, a, um, in, in a kind of good night Vienna kind of way, you know. Just um, nowhere near as good, obviously. Definitely. So one of the elements that really attracts me to Beatles books, and I think what would attract anyone to collect them, such as yourselves, is that there is an inherent nerdy passion behind all of it. Was it the chicken or the egg, though? Is it, it, it inherently nerdy, or is it the writing itself from all of the authors? Like, it, you know, is it written by the nerds and then we all adopted it, or? Was it all written by cool journalists that nerds co-opted? I think it's um, it's probably a bit of both, really. Mm. I think that it's interesting looking at the books that were successful and the books that aren't, you know, the books that really got through to people. Mm. Um, they tend to be by... So if you look at the, the kind of the holy, the kind of fab four, which is Hunter Davis, Shout, Philip Norman, Revolution in the Head, Ian MacDonald, mm -hmm. and... But probably Craig Brown's book is the last one. They're all written by journalists, and certainly Craig Brown, certainly Philip Norman, maybe to a lesser extent Hunter Davies. They're not Beatle but obsessives. They were mm. all journalists. You know, I mean, Ian McDonald was a journalist that that was you know that obviously loved the, the Beatles. But of course, Revolution Ahead is not a massively flattering book. In its, in its entirety about the Beatles. But yeah, that's an interesting question actually, because yeah, the, those books that have really got through tend to be written by people that aren't, you know, like actually the, the kind of books that I'm not really into is, uh, you know, like those giant like, discography books, you know, those mm. books that just list loads of different, you know, the Turkish print of Rubber Soul. What did that look like? How different was that? I'm not, I, I get no real pleasure from those meticulously researched and you know well done to those people that have done that but it's like interesting you know like the um the jerry hammock books the beatles recording sessions those mm. that have come out recently um really you know fascinating books 
if you're interested in all like the Beatles gear book, you yeah, know, I was just going to say Beatles gear. Yeah, yeah, for me personally, and which sort of reflects on the podcast. I'm I'm interested in the story. I'm interested in the characters of the story because it's the it's the best story ever. We all know that. Everyone listening to this knows that it's the greatest story ever. And I'm interested in looking at you know who kind of made that story rather than the drum skins or you know mm. and i get that people love that and that's that's cool and it'd be really boring if we all love the, the same stuff but um yeah I, I i like to look at um yeah a bit more about the the kind of personalities that made up mm. that story of all types be it you know i would read a book on jeff Britton. i would read a book on <laughs> you know i mean i would that's probably quite an interesting but obviously you've got a book about jim mccullough coming out this year um you know i i, I think there's anyone that had any kind of interaction or any viewpoint I think is, is worth listening to. Um, so, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's interesting. Those, those four big hitters have all been written by journalists. So maybe we kind of, yeah, maybe, maybe us geeks, we did co-op that story a bit, mm. but uh, who knows?